the message of today's morning is the second part of what we started last night, how to convert your invisible energy, how to convert your invisible energy to tangible product, or how to convert ideas into tangible product, how to convert ideas into tangible products, how to convert ideas into tangible product, how to convert ideas into tangible products, or how to convert your invisible energy into tangible products. How to convert the invisible energy, your invisible energy into tangible products. To convert an idea from the invisible world to a tangible thing, to become tangible, tangible, to become something tangible, to a, to a tangible product, to convert all your spirituality into something tangible, to convert your prayers into something tangible, and to convert your relationship with God into something tangible, to convert anything that you possess. And we all possess so many things that are invisible. For example, most some of us have love. How do you cause that you make your love to become something tangible, to become money, for example, or to become a product? Some of us have kindness. How do you convert your kindness to become something tangible, for example? Or some of us have, um, you know, some of us pray. So how do you convert your prayers to become tangible? You see, everything is energy. Energy is, cannot be created or destroyed, but energy is always there. But energy must be converted. So since everything is energy in this world, Kindness is energy. Prayer is energy. Relationships are energy. All of them could be converted. So if, if, if energy can be converted, it means that all ideas that you have, all your, skill, all your skills that you have that are not visible, all of them can actually be converted into something tangible, into a material product. That is what we are talking about. So how do you convert all these wonderful things that you have all these wonderful things that you have in your life, and you are not gaining from it, and you are not making anything out of it. How do you do that so that you convert the, the, the wonderful things, the wonderful qualities, the wonderful uh, ideas, the wonderful inspirations, the wonderful um, all things that you have that you think right now are invaluable or be just because they are, uh, they are non-tangible? How can you convert all of them to to products, to tangible products. And that's why I say that, wow, my, my, how I wish as many of you would be able to listen to this message and get a copy for yourself so that you'll be able to listen to it over and over again and you'll become an unstoppable believer. You'll become an unstoppable person. You'll be able to take, you'll be able to do anything you want. You'll be able to change your world. You'll be able to become influential. You'll be able to, you know, to become successful in anything. You'll be able to give God glory better. You'll be able to serve God more effectively. If you just know the secret of conversion. The secret of conversion. All right, let the journey begin. Here we go. Now, listen to this. First point, as I've written it down here. In order for you to be able to convert your invisible resources, either it's time or either it's some virtues, or other is character, or other is ideas, or other it is prayer, inspiration, anointing, whatever it is, <laughs> for you to be able to convert your invisible energy, invisible wealth, invisible resource into product, you must first pay attention to this one word. One word. For conversion to be possible, we need that one word. And that one word is called picture. Picture. The word picture is a word that we all are familiar with. Picture. Picture. The word picture is essential. The word pi picture is fundamental if you want to know what conversion, what true conversion is. You remember that we are talking about how to convert something. We are talking about how to convert something intangible 
into tangible into a tangible form we are talking about how to convert something spiritual or something uh something you know invisible or something some some energy or anything that is invisible so you remember we're talking about something invisible here and the most important word in conversion is picture 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 now why 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 is that what how come picture the thing is that you remember yesterday i started speaking about it i started speaking about the process of you know our, of uh inspiration and all that how you know of giving back to ideas so now that you have an idea or you know what the thing you want to convert you have an idea of what you want to convert you you, you know the thing either it's kindness or love or anything you must first make sure that you create a picture of that thing that you want to convert. You remember we stopped at understanding yesterday. So I'm not going to go back to that. You must have another, from this stage, what I'm saying is that you must have an understanding of what you want, of what you have. So how do you have the understanding of what you want to convert? We already spoke about that yesterday. So go get how to get the idea, how to get the understanding yesterday. We spoke on that. But now that you already have an understanding of what you want, so you must have an understanding of what you want. If you don't have an it is the understand it is from understanding that you must now create a picture. It is from understanding of what you want that you must now create a picture. Before anything could become tangible, it must first of all be in the form of a picture. It must first of all be a picture in your mind. Uh, let me use a biblical illustration to prove that to you. You remember in Proverbs 24, in Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 5, in Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 5, the Bible says there, Proverbs, this is the smart man that is writing this. This is Solomon, the smartest man that has ever lived. And he knows something about making things in, from impossibility to possible. He knows something from making things from intangibility, from invisibility to, to, to something concrete. And look what he says about building, about making something visible. He says, through wisdom, a house is built. Now, you tell me, how could you build a house through wisdom? Where is it? Uh, wisdom is something intangible itself. So how can you make something tangible come out from intangible, from invisibility? Wisdom is something invisible. We don't see wisdom. And I've always thought about that. How can I make something tangible, something visible come out of invisible? That is exactly what God did. And that's how God does it. And that is how things are created. Everything that we have seen created, every visible thing that we are seeing now, they come from the invisibility. They come from the intangible. They come from the spirit realm. And that's what he's saying here. True wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. <laughs> deep, deep, deep. Deep word. So how do you understand that? This is exactly what he's talking about. This is talking about conversion. This is talking about conversion. You know, I told you people before that the most important word you will ever learn in your life is the word conversion. When it comes to living on the earth, the most important word you will ever know is the word conversion. So this particular place is talking about conversion right now. And he says, true wisdom, through wisdom, a house is built, through wisdom. So every house that you see, and it's not just house, everything that is built, everything that you see, it could be a house, it was built by wisdom, it is built by wisdom. Everything that you can see, it could be a country, nations are built by wisdom, technologies are built by wisdom. Industries are built by wisdom. Economy is built by wisdom. Political, successful political careers are built by wisdom. Families are built by wisdom. Sons, successful human beings, sons and daughters of ours who have been successful, who have great achievements, they were built by wisdom. 
everything that is built, everything that you see great, everything that you see that is well built, everything that is functional is functional out of wisdom. Now, he says, through wisdom a house is built, through wisdom a house is built, and with, and with, and with by understanding it is established. How do we understand the true wisdom, something invisible, something intangible? A house is built, a nation is built, a family is built. Through wisdom. What does Solomon mean? Listen closely. For you to understand what Solomon means, you must know what wisdom is, therefore. Wisdom, if wisdom is the thing that builds everything that is visible, if wisdom is the power, if wisdom is that source, if wisdom is the energy, if wisdom is the, the, the skill, the craft, the, 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 the ability that makes things to be built, then what therefore is wisdom? Listen closely. Wisdom, my own description of wisdom, wisdom is the ability to see what God sees and how God sees. But before we go to the God aspect or, you know, how God sees or what God sees, let's leave the God aspect at all. Let's just take the elementary, the, 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 the fundamental understanding of wisdom. You must know. You know, don't just copy wisdom, the, the description of wisdom, how people say it. You know, that wisdom, you know, give, people give all kind of description of wisdom. But let me tell you, the real understanding of wisdom. The real understanding of wisdom is the ability to see. Wisdom is the ability to see, not physically with physical eyes, but with mental eyes. Wisdom is the ability to see in your mind. Wisdom, therefore, is the ability to create and paint pictures, mental pictures, pictures in the mind. That is wisdom. Wisdom, therefore, is the ability to see. Now, let me bring that closer home to you. So, how, what is that talking about? And what is Solomon talking about still? Through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. <laughs> that means, let's take a house. Let's take this, my house, that we are, we are living in right now, where we are right now. And behind me, you see another house just be in behind me. That's not my house. That's my neighbor's house. But just imagine the house where you are. What Solomon is saying is this. A house must be built. A Torah house, a proper house is always, is always built twice. The first time a house is built is not be built by wisdom. The first building of a house takes place in the mind of the architecture, architect. The first picture, I mean the first house, the first time anything is built, anything that is of worth, anything that is of quality, the first time it is built, anything that is visible, the first time it was built, it has to be built in the mind of somebody. Even our world. Let there be light. God first of all saw that light. He knew what light meant. He knew what would come forth when he says, let there be light. When he said, let there be trees, let there be firmament. He knew what to expect. He had seen firmament in his mind before he pronounced it and released it forth. He had seen light in his mind before he released it forth. He had seen trees, herbs, grass, animals. He had, he had, you have to first of all see that ability to create that picture of what you want in your mind. Is what you call wisdom. Wisdom sees the invisible. What is still invisible to all men? What is still invisible to everybody else? Somebody of wisdom is already carrying it in his mind. That is the first building. That is the first construction that happens in building. Then, the second time a house is built is by understanding now. Is when true details, you know, after the house has been built, 
you know, you see, this is my house. Let me just tell you the whole process. This is my house. Before even we got the land, before we, uh, we stop on the land, before we bought the land, we got an architect who just came to, we still have trees here. We still had grass here. We still had another, other buildings in this place. But we brought an architect. We brought an architect. And the architect looked at the land. We are still, we've not bought it. It's still dirt, full of dirt and houses and buildings, trees and everything. But we got an architect that we explained what we wanted to. And that architect got the concept in his mind and put it down, drew it down. He drew at the, the, this house. This whole thing we are saying was just in a sheet of paper. He brought it down from his mind, put it in a sheet of paper. That is a picture right there. And it was only one year or nine months later, or one year later, that you know, for a whole one year, I, my house was already built. I already saw it. It was in the mind of the architect. It was in my mind, and the architect was put in a paper. But it was only one year later that the whole world could now see that I have a house. But it has been built by wisdom before then. So the any house is first built in the mind of the architect before it is built by bricklayers. And the understanding aspect is the bricklayer, the you know, the people who do who do the the, the who do the uh the details of it. So so now the same thing with family. For you to build a successful family entity, you must first have the concept, see a picture. The detailed picture of the kind of family that you want. For you to build a country, you must have clear understanding and picture. If you don't have picture, you will mess up the process. And that is what he's talking about here. True wisdom, a house is built. The wisdom part, it must be built. Everything you want to construct in life must first of all be constructed in your mind. Now, that is just the introduction. So let's go back to my message. Let's go back to my message. So, to convert anything invisible that you have, either it's kindness, either it's love, either it's prayer, either it's uh, whatever it is, either it's anointing. You remember, I already told you how to convert anointing to an idea. Now, from an idea, you must now create a picture. From an idea, you must now pre create a picture. Or from a thought, like I said, you know, I gave you three words yesterday, idea, thoughts, and words. So from an idea, thought, or word, you must create, you must remodel, you must create a picture coming from that idea and coming from that picture or coming from that thought that you got. And I told you yesterday how to create you know, a, 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 an idea from inspiration. How to create an idea from anointing? How to create an idea from, you know, from, you know, from, from goosebumps? How to create idea from Holy Spirit, from, from the Spirit? I already told you that yesterday. So today we are moving on. How now you can create from an idea the, to create tangible things from, from, from invisible things to create tangible things now? You must first of all turn your idea into a clear, detailed picture in your mind. Let me give you another example. Anastasia McDonald, you are the one helping us to write and to make uh, uh, a, a jot. A, you, are doing, you are jotting down our thoughts, our, our idea, and Ola Martin is doing the same thing, and many, other, or many of you are doing the same thing. If you are writing down anything that I'm saying today, and I want to prove to you why picture is the first and most important word you must learn in bringing resources from invisibility to tangibility. From making I mean, the most important thing you've got to learn, the most to do to, for you to be able to create some, you know, added value, physically tangible uh, material things. I want you to write the word down. Write the word or if you are an English, if you are a Russian speaking person, please don't write this word. But if you are, if you don't, if you, you know, but any other person, I want you to write this word down. Write it in English. Write it in your language. Anyhow you understand it. Write this word down. 
the word yablaka. Write the word yablaka down. Yablaka. The word yablaka. Now, I want you to pronounce that word yablaka. I want you to pronounce that word yablaka. In your place, wherever you are. I'm not hearing you, but you pronounce it. You go ahead and pronounce it. Just say yablaka. Just say yablaka. I want you to pronounce it. Yablaka. Yablaka. Yeah, yeah. Emakule just wrote it. Yablaka, right. Anastasia, yablaka, right. Anastasia got it better than an I'm Emakulet. Yablaka. Uh, Mom Hanson, no, not quite right. Yablaka. Anastasia got it right. Yablaka, right. Right, yablaka. Yablaka. Good. Yablaka. Not yablaka. No, but yablaka. <laughs> yablaka. Not yabulaka. No, not yabulaka. No book there. Yablaka. Yeah, Lola Sharon get got it. Yablaka. Nkem got it. Yablaka. Right. Ola Mati. Yablaka. Right. Yablaka. Good. Write it anyhow you understand it. Yablaka. Now, the next assignment that I'm going to give you in connection with Yablaka is this. Yablaka, let's say, God gives you an idea. When you are in the spirit, or when you are praying, or fasting, seven days, seven, ten days, thirty days, forty days. And after your forty days fast, God told you, Yablaka will make you a billionaire. Yablaka will make you a billionaire. Yablaka, you will become a, a billionaire in the next one year through Yablaka. So go and start an industry and go and start a business, a whole business on Yablaka. And in one year later, you, one year later, you, that Yablaka will make you a billionaire. So, go do it. The next assignment I have for you concerning that word, Yablaka, is this. Any one of you that is there right now, I want you, I could say, I want you to go and get me one Yablaka. Go and get a hold of one Yablaka. Because you must be able to get a hold of it before you could produce it en masse to be, so that you could before you could become a billionaire. Now, tell me, what does Yablaka mean? You, all you guys who are writing the word Yablaka down, what does it mean? You don't know? Now, you ask me, you tell me the, the answer. The, the, tell me the answer. What is Yablaka? Do you know it? If you don't know, just write, I don't know. Okay, Shao said, we don't have an idea. Unkem says, no, what is it? You need to tell me what it is. Magic. Somebody said magic. Ladako said, what is Yablaka? That is good. Now you are getting my teaching. Now you are getting the concept now. You don't, you cannot, if, if you, good, Shigo says, Shigo just said the right thing. Shigo just said, the, made the right comment right here. Shigo got it right. Shigo just said now, if you see, go and do, go, all of you go and look at the comment of Shigo. Shigo said, what is Yablaka? I can't picture it. Brilliant. That is perfect description, perfect answer. What is Yablaka? I can't picture it. Look at the key word that Shigo has just used there. The word picture. The word picture. The word picture. Now, what does that mean? Anything that you are in, unable to picture, you cannot create. Anything that you are unable to picture, you cannot build. And that is what Solomon was talking about. That a house is built by wisdom, by picturing, by the ability to picture, by the ability to see. Not just vision. Many people, are, some people are writing the word vision. But this is more than vision. You know, vision could be a goal. Vision could be an assignment. Vision could be a drive. 
But here we are talking about a picture. If you don't see the picture, you will never be able to bring it to me. If you don't see a picture of what I'm expecting from you, you can't picture it. You can't picture it. If you cannot picture it, you can't create it. Now, listen closely now. This is what has happened to us in Christianity. We take the Bible, we take the Bible, we take the Bible, we read the Bible, we study the Bible, we've been taught to read the Bible every day, we've been taught to pray the Bible, we've been taught to confess the word, we've been taught to memorize the Bible. We've been taught to preach the Bible, teach the Bible, write the Bible. But we have not been taught to picture what we read. We've not been taught to picture every word. We've not been taught to create pictures out of the Bible. We've not been taught to create reality. Pictures that would become tangible. Pictures that will be converted into tangible products. That is why we have not been creating. That is why we have not been inventing. That is why we have not been, you know, we've not been bring the ones who are the Steve Jobs of this world. That's why we have not been the Bill Gates of this world. That's why we have not been the ones creating the biggest industries, the largest companies, the largest corporations. We are not the ones creating them. Why? We read the Bible and we don't even get any idea from it. We read the Bible, we don't even, we just stop at emotions, at goosebumps, at, you know, inspirations, at, you know, anointing, at some spiritual stuff. And we leave everything in the spirit. Whereas only things that you can picture, only things that you can make to become tangible benefit the world. So that's why we have been Christians. We are so many. There are so many Christians. We go to church. We do all these kind of things. We pray. We fast. We do. But we don't bring benefit. We don't have products. We are not ruling in the world. Because we have not learned the lesson that God taught us. This is the lesson that Solomon is teaching here. But even before Solomon, God himself used this same principle. He said, let there be light. Before, he saw, before we could see light physically, he first saw it in his mind. Before we could see everything, all of creation, he first had the picture in his mind. You see, the Spirit of God was hovering, hovering over the earth, creating the picture. Vivid image. And not just vivid image, but detailed pictures. You remember, that is the same lesson God was trying to teach Abraham. And God told Abraham, I will make you father of nations. And he said, how can I be father of nations? I don't even have a son. I don't even have a child. And God told him, you know what? I am going to make your descendants to be like the seas of the, earth, of this, of the sea. What was he trying to say? God was trying to create a picture of, this, of, of, of descendants of millions of people in the mind of Abraham, like the sand of the sea, the sand of the sea, the sand of the sea. He wanted him to see that picture. Only when you have seen the picture, you'll be able to bring it to tangibility. Then God told him, when one day God got so, so frustrated with him, God got so frustrated with Abraham, he told him, get out of that, your, your, of your house. Get out of that, your, 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 your heart. Go to the go go out in the night. Look, raise your head. Look up in the sky. What do you see? He said, I see stars. He said, How many of them do you see? He said, They are uncountable. He said, Count them. He said, I can't count them. He said, So shall your descendants be. Picture. <laughs> picture. 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 He had to make him to first of all picture. His descendants before he could begin to have them in real, in real life. In real life. That is why your mind is the most important thing you have on earth. Not even your spirit. Because your spirit is just giving you life. But your mind determines your effectiveness in life. Your mind determines how relevant you'll be on earth. Your mind 
the more you develop your mind, the more productive and the more, you know, you, the, the, the more successful you are on earth. Your mind, nothing as, nothing as important as your mind. So when you go to those churches where people tell you that don't read books, don't study, don't do research, that put your mind down, don't think you think too much, that you have to run away from that church like crazy. Like you have to run away from such churches as if, as if they, are, they, are lepro they have leprosy. Because there is nothing more important you have, God has given you, than your mind. I mean, when we are talking about spirit, soul, and body. Because if you, the one that, you know, let's, let's even say, well, I'm talking about that yablaka. Now, let's not go back to that yablaka. Let's say you have an idea of yablaka means. And you just have a concept. But you, you, you might have some progress. You might make some progress. But you know who will make the, be, the, the greatest progress? The person who doesn't just have a concept, but the person who has the total picture, the detailed picture of what Yablaka is. For example, we, I could tell you, uh, you know, I could tell you, bring a book. And you could bring a book to me, which is just black and white book. But somebody else could bring a book that is colorful. You know, the more detailed, the more colorful the picture is, the more successful you are able to produce into a product. The more detailed, the more detailed, the more colorful. Remember that. The picture must be in details. The picture must be colorful. Just like this, my house, for example. Uh, when the architect first drew the sketch of the house, it was only black and white sketch. I didn't like it. But when they finish doing the architectural design, design, I was so I couldn't believe it. It was so detailed. I in the pictures before even we started we started clearing the land, I could see in the architectural design the color of every room, the color of every room, not just the color of every room. I could see the color of every floor. I could see the, uh, uh, plitka, what do you call plitka I get? I could see the, um, the tars, the tars. I could see the tars that they, the tars that were used in the, the color of the tars in the toilet, the colors of the tar in the, in the, in the, in the, in the bathroom. I could see the, the curtains. I could see the window, window blinds. I could see everything. I could see the, the furniture. I could see, you know, the, the, the kitchen. I could see, uh, the, 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 you know, the, everything in details. The more details you have in your picture, in the picture of your mind, the more successful the product that you produce, the greater the product that you produce. You must see full picture. You must see detailed. It is that detail that you produce. It is that the more colorful the, the it is that that detail of it that creates that 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 gives you the 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 if if you are going to be successful or better than the other, more competitive or not. So now let me continue um, that I, that thing I'm telling you. So if you don't know. And you cannot picture what Yablaka is. You will never build a, a, a business around Yablaka. Let me give you another example. I come from Nigeria. Let's say you are not a Nigerian, uh, but I come from Nigeria. Let's say God, give, you, you've been praying and wondering and, and praying to God, and then God gives you an idea and tells you, the whole of Africa eats something for breakfast and tells you, Go and create an industry whereby this product will be created in a matter of seconds. And it will be, you'll be able to create a product in a matter of one day that will create, every morning you'll be able to create a product that will be able to feed millions of people breakfast in Nigeria. I mean in Africa, even in Nigeria alone. And that this product will give you, make you a billionaire in one year. If you are able to create a machinery, that doesn't make people to do it with their hand and, you know, the, 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 the local way, but you could pre produce a mechanism whereby this same product will be produced in millions and to millions of homes. Millions of homes will be hitting them every morning. 
And that product is, in my native language, is called, because that's what I used to produce when I was in primary school, secondary school. And that's what I used to sell when I was, when I was, a, 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 when I was a teenager. This product, and you are an American, let's say, or you are a European, and the product is Ogi. Just like you just wrote Yablaka now, the product is Ogi. Now you can write the word Ogi. So it doesn't matter, you might be able to pronounce it, you might be able to write it, you might be able to memorize it, you might be able to, you know, do, you might be able to write it, teach even other people Ogi, 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 Ogi. But if you cannot picture it, you will never be able to produce it. The same thing with Yablaka. The same thing with every other thing. Anything you are not able to picture, you will never be able to produce. So no matter how you do, uh, the anointing you have, no matter how God loves you, no matter how much God comes down to tell you to do this and that, and that and, but if you cannot draw the picture in your mind, if you cannot build that picture in details, if you cannot build the picture of the process, if you cannot build the picture of the, de of the picture of the details and everything, you will never be able to put it down. So just like my house. The house was, was first of all built by wisdom in the mind of the architect. Then the architect took the next stage, went and drew it down. That is the next stage. Well, after you get the picture, the detailed picture, but for you, sometimes for you to get the detailed picture, you must do research. You need to do research to make it more detailed, to make it more colorful, and to make sure that all the process is considered to make sure that all the process is considered so you have to consider all the process and make sure that you have the best possible <laughs> you have the best possible picture that is why god was always jesus was always saying take heed take heed of how you hear why you need to hear to create pictures take heed of what you see why you need to see to create picture. So the purpose, therefore, of seeing is picture. And the purpose, the end purpose of hearing is picture. The end purpose, therefore, to, uh, to continue my word, the end purpose, therefore, of information, just like we go to church and preach, 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 we teach, 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 teach. We don't get results. The reason why we've not been getting results with our teaching and preaching in churches, the reason why we've not been getting results that are reading the Bible and praying is that we have not been taught that the end product of information is pictures. The purpose of information, knowledge, is for you to be able to create pictures. That is why you see, you see many people who finish engineering in institutes or university, even people in Africa, we've been finishing universities and in, uh, we, we even study better when it comes to the theory. We study better than the Europeans in the university. We study better than Americans in the university. But we don't work with pictures. We work with theory. But for us to be able to build the modern industries, for us to build the modern technologies, for us to be able to build the modern, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, everything for the future. For us to be, be able to build the modern world of the future, we must learn to work with pictures and to form pictures in our mind. That is why Proverbs chapter 7 verse 7, I mean, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, That is why Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, Wisdom, therefore, is the principal thing. Now, I want you to answer the question now. I'm sure you know that scripture. And I'm sure, I am sure you've read and you've even preached about this particular scripture many, many times in your life. But I want you now to answer the question, you no, know, bearing on the you know, using the knowledge that you now have. I want you now to answer this question, please. This scripture that we just read, Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. What does it mean now? Write it. Write it for, to me. What does it mean? Do you now understand what it means? Wisdom is the principal thing. What does it mean right now? 
Do you, what does it mean? Why is wisdom the principal thing? Why? Tell me. Write it right now. Why is wisdom the principal thing? I want to read. I want to read what you write. Why is wisdom the principal thing? Why is wisdom? I'm waiting for your answer. Why is wisdom the principal thing? Why? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, Sharon, Sharon Banahene says, wisdom gives you the clear picture of planning. The, the, the reason why wisdom is the principal thing is that we, it is true wisdom. You build the clear picture. Wisdom gives you the picture board. Wisdom allows you, true wisdom, you create picture. True wisdom, you build it is the building, it is picture, it is the, it is the, it is wisdom that gets you the picture. That is why wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom gives you the picture before the things comes into creation, before the things is established. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, because picture is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing, why? Because pictures are the principal things. Wisdom is the principal thing because pictures are the principal things. Wisdom is what gets you and makes you to create pictures in your mind. And when you can see it, you can get it. Anything you can see the picture of, it is easier for you now. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You see, the Bible says here, wisdom is the principal thing. No, sorry, in the other place we read, uh, uh, Proverbs 24 verse 3, he says, wisdom, through wisdom a house is built, is the number one thing, is the principal thing. It is the, the beginning of the building. It is through wisdom the house is built, but through understanding it is established. Now, let me give you that uh, uh, illustration right there. Let me give you that understanding of what that means. Through wisdom a house is built means, like the architect, let's use the same example of the architect. The architect draws the, the plan of the house. Yeah? So the, 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 the architectural plan, the project is done by the architect. That is the wisdom part. The understanding part is what the bricklayers, the builders, the physical building. It is, that is why I say the wisdom builds the house. The real building is actually in the hand of wisdom. The building, the real building is the picture. The real product is the picture. Now, but by understanding it is established. The physical building is done by understanding. Now, what do you think? Which is more important? The work of the architect or the work of the laborers, the bricklayers? Which is more valuable? Is it the bricklayer? Or of course, the architect. Because the architect does 75% of the work. And the work that the bricklayers do is only 25%. Now, listen to me. The ability to get wisdom, the ability to be able to build the picture in your mind, true wisdom, the ability to build the picture and in color, true research, true research, true details, true color, the ability to build that picture and have every detail in place, is 75 percent 75 percent now the construction part of it which means because after you finish building the picture after you finish building it after you have the picture and everything the architectural design is ready you still need the physical visible building and that is only 25 percent and 
And the same thing with you. Anytime you are able to, before you do anything, you must first of all sit down and finish the process of building through understanding, I mean through wisdom, before you now take it to the level of understanding to now do the 25%, which is construction work. Now, let me give you another illustration that will help you. And this might be able to help you to understand the Bible better and Jesus better. You remember what Jesus said concerning this? In Luke chapter 14, 28, it says, For which of you, listen to the words of Jesus, For which of you, intending to build a tower, For which of you, intending to build a tower, Does not sit down first and count the cost, Whether he has enough to finish it, Or what king is going to make a war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able to with 10,000 to meet who, who, um, him who comes against him with 20,000. What Jesus is trying to tell us right here is that your success depends on your picturing. He said before you build a house, you need first of all to sit down. Don't rush. You know what most of us do? We get an idea. We don't even care for the picture. We run to go and build. You neglect 75% and to, we want to go and do 25%. That's why we fail. But Jesus is saying here, use wisdom to build. Don't use hands to build. Don't use legs to build. Use wisdom to build. That's why before you build your tower, it's a sit down first. Create the picture. Do the 75% work. Get the picture in colors. Get it in details. And once that is done, then... Take that picture and begin to use understanding to do the 25% of the rest of the world that is left. The same thing when you want to go against a king for, uh, in a war. First of all, sit down. Do 75% of the work first in your mind. Through research, through understanding. Build a system. Build a system. Build a structure. Put the process in place. Do everything like the architect, architect would have done in building a house. Finish the house first in wisdom, in your mind, in pictures. Then the rest of the job will only be 25%. Now, do you understand why Solomon is saying wisdom is the principal thing, therefore? In fact, Solomon has gone to the extent to say that with all thy getting, with all thy getting, buy, I mean, that means sell everything you need to sell to get wisdom. What is that? The ability to see. But the superior wisdom, the ultimate wisdom, is what I spoke to you about yesterday. The, I mean, yeah, yesterday morning. Yesterday morning. The ultimate wisdom, the ultimate source of wisdom is the ability to connect to see, sorry, to the ability to see what God sees. The ability to picture and see what God sees. Wisdom, therefore, the ultimate wisdom is the ability, is whatever God sees. To be able to line up with what God sees. To be able to see what God sees. And that's what I spoke to you yesterday morning about. But even without that, any idea, anything spiritual could be conceptualized into for example let's say how do you convert kindness kindness into into a product you sit down first you know you have kindness you want to be kind sit down make a calculation count your resources what do you have where do you want to show this out of kindness to whom do you want to show it do you want to throw it up and down everywhere and it's not even noticed or you want to go and calculate where will they have the best effect? Uh, who is most ill in need? How much would, will it cost? What about get, going to get sponsors? What about getting partners? What about build the system first? Then by the time you go out to, out to do the 25% of, you know, going to really do the real act of finance, it has become explosive. Television is carrying it. The whole world is talking about it. You, your kindness has on you fame, visibility, tangibility, even money. Same thing with love. Love could be converted, but thought it must be processed. 
It must be pictured. It must be built. It must be planned out. But the process must be worked out. You must build a structure around that love. You must be able to build a system for that love. Then by the time you go out to do the 25% of it, your love is conquering the world. Same thing with building a church. Same thing with building a business. Same thing with building an industry. Same thing with building a, a, a country, ETC. By the way, for those people who are wondering, what is Yablaka anyway? It doesn't matter what it means. Yablaka simply means apple. But it's not about Yablaka. The point, you got my point. The point is about picture. Are you able to picture this thing or you are not able to picture it? That's what the point is about. That's why I didn't bother to tell you. But Yablaka means apple. Apple in Russian language. But that is not about apple. It's about the lesson. It's about the lesson I want to, uh, I want to pass across to you. Now you understand what the Bible says as well in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12, I mean, verse 12 to 15. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12 to 15. The Bible says here that I, wisdom, wisdom is talking about itself. I say, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. And find out knowledge with witty inventions. Wisdom is the key to inventions. So how is wisdom coming? How, what is the key to inventions? Pictures. Wisdom is the key to, to invention. But why did he say, I dwell with prudence and knowledge? Because for you to be able to paint a picture, you must do research. For you to be able to pick the, paint a picture, you must get knowledge. Wisdom is a result of two things. Wisdom is a result of prudence, knowledge. Wisdom is a result of information, knowledge, and the process of that information into a picture. Into a picture. So without self-education, without getting knowledge, and then without converting that knowledge into pictures, you will never be able to produce physical products. You will never be able to bring out inventions. You will never be able to change your world. You will never be able to shock your world. You will never be able to be extraordinary. You will never be able to be special. You will never be able to be remarkable. But if you learn the acts of picturing, you will always bring out new product every day. Each time you read the Bible, turn what you read into pictures. Each time you stay in the presence of God, try to see picture of what he's trying to teach you. Get my message of yesterday, how to convert anointing into ideas. So, but then go from ideas into pictures. So, once you go to pray, or when you do praise and worship, make sure that the goosebumps, the anointing you are feeling, you convert it first into idea. Then convert the idea into pictures. Then you'll be unstoppable. There is nothing you will do where you will not be exceptional. There is nothing you lay your hands on where you will not be the best. There is nothing you will do where you will not be, where, where you will not just be a wow. And this is the way Christians, and this is the strategy. All these my teachings are the strategies to make Christians the head and not the tail. These are the ways and the pathway for Christians to be the head and not the tail, the first and not the last. This is the, these are the strategies and these are the wisdom from God, from the Bible, from the Word of God that we could use to be better than all the unbelievers out there. This is the only way through taking the wisdom of the Bible, wisdom of the world, combining it together, doing like, Je I mean, like, like Joseph and Daniel. This is true the means through which we could overtake people like you know Bill Gates. This is the only way that will make us to be able to be competitive and overtake people like Steve Jobs. This is the only way where we can do things that will excel what people like you know, Richard Branson have done. This is the only way Christians we, you know, could become the best in every sphere of life. We must become, stop being religious. Unfortunately the thing that we have been given in church is mainly religion. It's time to stop being religion. It's time to stop being religious, sorry. We have just been religious. We read the Bible religiously. We pray religiously. We go to church just for religion. Everything is just about religion, nothing about conversion. But by the time we make our Christianity to be convertible, to become a matter of conversion rather than a matter of just, you no, know, uh, rather than a matter of, you know, culture and, you know, tradition, then 
then, you know, we will become world changers. Because the whole of the Bible is about making invisible things from the spirit visible. All of the Bible is about conversion. All of the Bible is about converting from invisible world, from spirit world, into something tangible. Can you imagine the word of God? The word of God became Jesus. The word that was with God, that was, you know, God became flesh. That is conversion. It became Jesus. That is how we, we know Jesus. The word about, you know, that the word of prophecy that was given about the Son of God, that the baby will be taken to Egypt, came to pass. It came to pass in, in the material world. The prophecy about Herod, ask, you know, seeking to seek after you know, the baby Jesus, was manifested in the physical realm. The word of Simon, Simeon, the devout, the that they say will not die until he sees the Messiah, came to pass in real world. These are things from the spirit that were first of all just spiritual truth. That were just ideas, visions, or revelations that were converted into physical world. Hannah the prophetess, the widow from, from the age of seven after losing her virginity, who was standing in the, in her praying in the wilderness, her prayers were converted into physical, physical manifestation because she actually saw that Messiah before she went to heaven. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, got a word. That word became manifested in the physical realm because the baby was born. It became materialized. Everything in, in the world we see today is because things are being converted from the spirit realm to the physical world. And, and, and the same thing with God. With the light that we are seeing today was first in the spirit realm before it was converted. The trees and the firmament and the land and the sea, everything we are seeing in the physical realm today, they were first invisible in the spirit realm before they became visible. Mary didn't have a husband, but the word of the Lord came to Mary. She, that word became converted, and the, the word became true. And the, 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 you know, we, we, she was able to get pregnant. The prophecy of Agabus, even prophecy, when you know, you know, the Agabus prophesied about Paul, that prophecy came to pass. Why? Because it was converted from the invisible world, from the spirit realm, into physical manifestation. The word that Jesus will save the, his people from, this, from their sins is what has brought us to the kingdom of God right now. Why? That word that was given is being converted every day till today into physical manifestation. Jesus prophesied that this gospel will be preached to the end of the earth. It was started only in Jerusalem that time. Now, the gospel is being preached to the end of the world. The world became manifested in the tangible physical world. Anything that is not converted into tangible physical world does not benefit the earth. It is not needed on the earth. Anything that remains in the spirit, that remains idea, that remains only some prophecy, prayers, or all that, they, are on, they don't benefit the earth until they are converted in to physical, tangible things. The word that Jesus gave, that the Holy Spirit was going to come, was manifested. That's why we speak in tongues today. Everything from the Spirit has to come down to become, to become something manifested, something tangible, before it could benefit the earth. And that is why the, the word that was with God, the word that was God, had to become flesh before we could get a Savior. That's the same thing. All your spiritualities are not needed unless you could be converted. All your prayers are, are a waste of time if they cannot be converted. All your prophecy are just, you know, stimulations without the conversion. All your, you know, you know, everything you are doing, your ideas and everything are just a waste if they cannot be converted. That is why the most important word you ever learn in your lifetime as a believer is the word conversion. Is the word conversion. But if you are able to use picture, if you are able to use wisdom, and if you are able to master this act and learn all these messages all this week I've been preaching, you will be unstoppable. You will be one of the best in your age and generation. Congratulations that you came across Pastor Sunday Adelaja. Congratulations that you could listen to me. If you have, been, if you have missed out on some of my teachings, you need to quickly find time and lock yourself up and look for sundayadelajablog.com sundayadelajablog.com see all my messages and you could listen to them and be able to make, make, rebuild your life become the architect of your life and destiny and become one of the most 
most, most successful human being on the earth. If you get this message right, you will become one of the most successful human beings on, on planet earth. Congratulations to all of you. If you don't have a copy of this message, it's very easy. Just go and, um, and press the, look for the link button, I mean the share button. She press the share button. Once you press that, it will come to your timeline and you'll be able to listen to it as many times as possible.